to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Micah chapter 4. Prophet Micah began to speak and prophesy about the the character of the end time church he began to reveal by the spirit the nature of the operation of the church micah chapter 4 and verse 1 and the prophet said it shall come to pass in the last days if we can have it media help us so that we just hurry up micah chapter 4 and verse 1 that the mountain of the lord's house are we together that it shall be established on the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills that's a level of influence that is coming from the church and the bible says verse 2 it says that all nations this says many nations do we have king james there shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord that means a time will come we will not look for them there will be a grace an investment of the spirit upon us and the bible says that they will say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob please keep it there it says and he will teach us his ways this is why they are coming to learn the ways of God please I want you to understand that you see dominion in this kingdom is not an impartation there is no grace for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of God praise the Lord so that your experience and that of another believer, even though the same Lord is rich unto all, the difference will be based on your depth of comprehending the ways of God. And this is also the biblical index to measure spiritual growth. In the Bible, we are taught that you are growing spiritually when two things happen to you. Number one, when you conform to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. This is the first biblical index to measure growth. Are we still together? I'm told there are overflows together. I bless you. I'm sure you are following. So the degree to which I confirm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. There's a reason why I, I like to hear the sound. The, the prophet said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp hallelujah so the bible says are we still together yes the degree it says my little children of whom i travail until christ he was talking to believers the formation of christ because you see spiritual realities are twofold in their operation there is the prophetic dimension of spiritual realities realities from the standpoint of the christ but there is the experiential manifestation of the same so realities can be established in the realm of the spirit but never find expression within this domain are we together the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled but it tells you the location in heaven he never said in the earth it takes faith and the operation of the mysteries of the kingdom to make it settled on earth and the first earth is you that vessel of earth before your territory are we together now yes i'm showing us the the conferences like these 
are encounters with the light of God. It's a feast of light. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 5 that the light shineth in darkness, it says, and the darkness comprehended it not. It is very important. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he said, having their understanding darkened, he says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. That means in spite of all that Christ has done, our ignorance, our barrenness, when we are bankrupt spiritually, when we do not sustain the requisite level of spiritual understanding, the Bible tells us that we can be alienated from the potential of the life of God are we together this morning so he will teach us his ways in John chapter 14 when you read verse 6 Jesus is teaching and he said I am the way there is Jesus the way the methodology of the kingdom he opens you up to the secrets and the system of God this is very, very important. God is also a God of patterns. I'm taking my time to build so that you will understand. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 40. When Moses was building the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Bible says in chapter 25 and verse 40 that God continued to come down to insist that you make them according to the pattern. Somebody say pattern. There are spiritual patterns. Things do not just happen haphazardly. There is a pattern for healing. There is a pattern for growth. Are we together? There is a pattern for speed. There is a pattern for influence. And that if you want to host my glory, you must ensure that the house is built according to pattern. Go to Exodus chapter 40. And then from verse 33, it's amazing that the Shekinah of God never rested upon that building until they finished the work according to pattern. And then 34 now says, um, please give it to us. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of God filled that tabernacle. Consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence feels it consuming sweet perfume your awesome presence Listen, believers, hear me. Every time the glory of God shows up, it comes to confirm that his patterns have been followed. The glory of God never shows up until his patterns have been kept. The glory of God is an attestation upon a life, an organization, a ministry that the patterns of the spirit have been kept. So when your life reflects the beauty and the glory of God, it is a report card speaking to the world that you have walked in keeping with God's patterns. Are we together? The glory of God confirms that his patterns. If the glory of God comes upon your finances, it is an attestation that you have kept the patterns of the spirit the economic system of the kingdom have been kept. If the glory of God comes upon your ministry, comes upon your family, when your family reflects Psalm 112, it is proof that you have kept certain principles. The Bible says in Psalm 112, it says, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. The Bible then says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. It says, The generation of the upright shall be blessed. It says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever. When your life becomes that living epistle, it is proof that you have kept the pattern. So we are here like spiritual archaeologists to explore the patterns of the spirit. Shifting is not just a confession. Transiting from one dimension. It is true the Bible says the path of the just 
provided you are just he says the character of your life should be such that you transit from one dimension of glory even to another in the similitude of the rising of the sun unto the perfect day however scripture now says they know not psalms 82 and verse 5 it was a lamentation in the spirit that they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and verse 5 says all the foundations of the earth are out of course then verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but the tragedy is in the next verse it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes it takes spiritual illumination light light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's the miracle in that song will you open my eyes let me see believers sing it one more time will you open my eyes let me see listen to me listen the bible is filled with limitless possibilities that were demonstrated by the saints and the kingdom life itself is a compendium of infinite possibilities please follow me that our work of faith is only limited by the ability of the one who is called Abba the source the sustainer the defender are we together now that the kingdom life please understand this the kingdom life is a compendium of infinite possibilities however that those possibilities are guided and coordinated by an exact body of knowledge there is an exact body of knowledge that is responsible for the various outcomes that we desire. And this conference seeks to bring us to a point of quintessence where we stop shadow boxing. We do not just randomly apply spiritual principles in hope that one of them will work. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. So it's a conference that brings us to come up here that we will see better that you know exactly what is responsible for increase you know what is exactly responsible for restoration listen every dimension you require is in christ every dimension your destiny needs is available but do you have the requisite level of spiritual understanding that is tied to that result you know pastor most believers what happens in the body of christ i am not i do not think the body of christ is in ignorance no i do not agree god has helped us in this age and in this time but the challenge is that there is no sequential arrangement of spiritual truth so we do not really know what truth is responsible for what spiritual outcome we engage truth randomly the blood of jesus the fire of the holy ghost prophecy offering seed sacrifice and the danger is that one of them will walk but because there is no exactitude to our spiritual understanding we can no longer reproduce the results is god speaking to us and so we must come to a point where we're not just excited about spiritual knowledge we're excited about exact spiritual knowledge i should be able to know that when i'm learning a revelation i must see its applicability in my spiritual life not every spiritual knowledge is important as far as the victory and the dominion of the saints are concerned just because it is spiritual does not mean it is useful so jesus says i have many things to tell you he says but he cannot bear them he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you you must be guided divination uses truth mm -hmm. witchcraft uses truth so you must be guided there is an exact body of knowledge you see it is frustrating to know what can be 
and yet your life never captures that experience. I know God can restore, but why will it not happen in my life? I know God can give speed. I cannot doubt it. The Bible is an attestation of that possibility. People recovered lost things. An archive of these exploits was captured in Hebrews 11. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Are we together now? Yes. So that we know what is responsible for what outcome. My God, that after service, someone can know that in the next one month, I will take the 10 years I have lost and put it in that one month by a spiritual understanding. Yes, time can be restored in God's economy. He says, I will restore the years, not just the things. If all you lose is things you did not lose, but when you lose time, you really lost. So when God begins to restore his focus, because real dominion is dominion over time. Whatever steals your time, stole your destiny. Is God blessing us already? So we thrive on the strength of our depth of spiritual understanding. Jesus shows up and he begins to mentor a group of people, first the twelve. Then the 70. Then as many who were interested in attending his conferences. He started with what we know theologically to be the Beatitudes. He was teaching them another system of government that was similar but um, also passing in excellence. Are we together? And when he gets to chapter 13 of Matthew, then verse 11, please give it to us. Jesus was teaching them. And they were confused as to the parables that he was given. He had to downgrade spiritual realities to use um, a system that the people were, were used to. And then he makes a statement that I want us to read together if you can see. Ready? Please read. It says, he answered and said unto them, uh -huh, Because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Please stop. He captures this body of knowledge that is allocated for the victory of the saints and he calls it the mysteries of the kingdom. There is an exact body of truth that is privy to those who are in the kingdom. Are we together now? This is very powerful. That means that our exploits is predicated upon our spiritual understanding, our access to this body of knowledge that the Bible calls mysteries. Everybody say mysteries. A mystery is a hidden body of knowledge. It's a formula, but it is hidden from the eyes and the knowledge of all. It is privy to a group of people. For instance, there are codes of communication that will only be understood by those in the military. Am I correct? They have communications, they have body languages that suggest certain things. But you will have to be in the military when you are absorbed into that system. Then they open up to you so that they can be communicating and a layman who is not a military man may not understand they are called mysteries a husband and a wife can have codes of communication as far as the family context is concerned pastor can for instance tell his wife get the visitor a drink and yet the visitor never hears anything by reason of intimacy they have established certain codes are we together now in the kingdom there are mysteries for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. It's a mystery that only the sons in light can understand. It says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. For instance, why will a man dance his way out of shame and reproach? Dancing does not make sense to be a weapon of victory. But it is a mystery in the kingdom. Praise. Why should I sing and dance in the midst of situations and circumstances that are unfavorable? Because the Bible says you will reap in joy, not with joy, in joy. So if you are not joyful, the possibility of the harvest is not even there. These are mysteries. Listen. 
when things were missing in the Bible, there was a mystery that they engaged. It was the ministry of the prophetic. Alas, master, it was borrowed. He said, don't worry. There is a provision in God's economy where things that are lost can return. And I'm saying it prophetically to someone. Listen, do you know that whatever lives your life is still on earth? That means there is a technology that calls it back. And the bones were very dry. He says, son of man, Listen, just because you could not see the bones did not mean they were not there. They were there waiting for a dimension of spiritual reality to call them back. That means relationships can be called back. Finances, money can be called back. Your passion, your fire for God, the things of the spirit can be called back. Please believe, find a way of believing what I am telling you. It is true. Are we blessed? You are not growing. If your understanding is unfruitful as far as the exact listen when it has to do with our knowing God and pressing into the deep things of God it is infinite we will never exhaust it even in heaven there is room to come up hither we will continue to learn God as a book that never ends are we together now however as far as the victory of the saints is concerned there is an exact body of knowledge that is finite. The knowledge that makes for the victory of the saints on earth is not infinite. It is finite. Like the curriculum of a university, you can hold it. And know that with all humility, I have exhausted the length and the breadth as far as the victory of the saints is concerned. The understanding that the principles that make for victory is infinite already frustrates you from the start of the journey. You are supposed to be so blessed that you no longer try to look for things and you focus on him. He now becomes your project. He now becomes what the continuity of your spiritual pursuit is no longer to get things but to seek him. If you spend your life trying to conjure these principles to walk, you live the wasted life, respectfully speaking. It's not to insult you, but to communicate truth. We were not designed to spend our lives hoping that principles work. Your lifetime is too short to be trying and guessing. Remember, we're talking time here. There is a level of accuracy that I must step into. Sort my finances, sort family, sort my health. Be like Abraham that he was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. So that now when I go to pray, I do not have any prayer point except to seek his majesty to know him more to serve him more to see to it that his purposes are birthed but that cannot be possible until the things that make for life and godliness are sorted out so he granted us the mysteries of the kingdom that these keys will bring us to a point where we can exercise the dominion of heaven in reality here and now are we blessed this morning this is what you get in church you don't get this in a bank no i was glad when they said unto me let us go why because the church of god is the house of god there is a gate there is a portal that opens men from that region to the throne of god when they come they receive a supply of applicable spiritual knowledge that you are equipped like giving a warrior a sword you can walk out of this place and say happy sunday and know you will return next sunday with a testimony yeah. you are not hoping you are not guessing i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded dr luke began to teach theophilus in chapter one of luke he talked about the things that are most surely believed there are things that you should not be doubting and hoping if they work or not. You should have come to a point of persuasion, unbendable persuasion. Someone pray whilst you are seated. Lord, open my eyes. Strengthen my conviction. Someone is praying in this conference. Open my eyes. I'm tired of guessing and hoping I'm getting it right. There is a way. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
I don't have all the time, but I'm going to just be sharing with us maybe one for this service and then another for the next. What I call the mysteries of the kingdom. Did I give my message a title? <laughs> call it the mysteries of the kingdom. Let's call this part one. We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the truths and the mysteries that we know. We do not reign by intention. It takes more than intention to reign. It takes more than desire. It takes more than a well-meaning heart. Please listen to me, dear people of God. When we sustain the intelligence of the spirit, you will rise like Satan does not exist. It is true. Hallelujah. Our ignorance will continue to magnify Satan to the degree to which our ignorance remains. That is the degree to which he remains magnified. Knowledge deflates him. Deflates him to a point where he no longer becomes a point and a source of concern. Because you have been so elevated by the strength of knowledge. He says, I went up by revelation. I didn't go up by desire. I went up by revelation. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the mysteries of the kingdom? Number one. The first mystery of the kingdom that I will share with us that is responsible for the strange rising and the lifting of men that can transit any man, any organization, and any body of people from one dimension to the other is called the mystery of prayer. The mystery of prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus is teaching now. And how many of you know that when Jesus is teaching, you listen to him? Jesus is teaching on prayer. And this is what he says. The Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. So the only person exempted from prayer is the one who is not a man. This is the first information. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for preachers. Prayer is not even for desperate people. Prayer is for men. He spake a parable to the end. The morale is that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are we together now? So he's teaching on prayer. Let's listen to Jesus' thoughts on prayer. Um, I have to rush because of time. Jesus is giving a scenario. He starts by saying there was this judge. Wow, sin one already is a law court. Are we together now? And then he describes a judge, I pray you never find such in your life. That there's this man who did not fear God. That means the Holy Spirit cannot talk to him and he obeys. And then he did not also regard men. You could not talk to him. What sort of a man is that? Did not fear God, did not regard men. This was the judge. Your destiny depends on such a man. No fear of God, no regard for men. Sin 2, very interesting, verse 3. The Bible now says there was a widow. Look at the contrast. A widow is a woman that is supposedly defenseless. Are we together now? He's showing you the excellency of prayer. So he starts with a cruel man that seems to have no fortitude for forgiveness or mercy or repentance. Then he now shows a woman who is supposedly helpless. And he said, get justice for my adversary. And for a while, the Bible says, next verse, that this man would not pay attention to her. But then he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, verse 5. He says, yet because this widow troubles me. That means there is an effect to prayer. That when men pray, it's not only their sound they hear. There is a sound in the realm of the spirit that moves beyond that horizon, the region of prayer. And begins to correct things. That prayer is a system of negotiation. It's a system of kingdom legislature. You can be at a point and your prayer immortalizes your presence goes to a region where you cannot go and begins to correct things this is a judge that does not fear God this is a judge that has no regard for men yet a widow 
uses this mystery of prayer is God speaking to someone and then he says less by her continual coming the key is consistency that means when I am weak prayer can make me strong you may think London will not open up for me you are right until I pray you may think I may not get a job. You are right until I pray. You think my children will become what other people have. You are right until I pray. Your prophecy about me is correct until I pray. It's true that I should fail. It's true that my papers don't seem to be coming until I pray. Jesus is teaching that the saints are not powerless when you understand the jurisdiction of the spiritual realities that prayer can capture. It's not just an instrument to respond during emergency. No! Prayer can move things. Believe me. You can grow your way through prayer. You can transit to a newer version of you through prayer. Luke chapter 9. Please give it to us. We have to hurry up. My spirit is fired up. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. Luke chapter 9. The Bible says as he prayed, two things happened. That must happen to someone after this conference number one is the appearance of his face was altered that means prayer can transform you to a weak from a weak you to a strong you prayer can transform you from a timid lady a timid man the first thing that happened when Jesus prayed was that his countenance I can become a newer version of me if I can pray rejoice not over my yesterday prayer can change me yes i know that i was once saul the son of kish barren of spiritual intelligence not even knowing where the donkey is but as i pray i will find a samuel and i will return back to be one of the sons of the prophet men can grow men can transit they can rise to superior versions of themselves all you see is not all that can be there truly can be more. Apostle, nobody wants to help me in London. I don't know why. I don't have anybody. You are right until you pray. Apostle, I am bound hand and chain and it looks like my life cannot move forward. Ask the early church. They prayed. They prayed angels to the earth. They prayed chains to fall. we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do Please sit down. Please sit down. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 tells us that prayerlessness creates anxiety. You know what anxiety is? Anxiety is the natural reaction of man to uncertainty. It is human to be uncertain. There are no guarantees anywhere because men can change. Prayer becomes the stabilizer to a man's life. It says be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing but in that means there is no issue that prayer cannot listen prayer is not the only key but where prayer is not the key is the hand that holds the key in any case you will need prayer in everything by the mystery of prayer and supplication with thanksgiving don't assume he knows your request make your request known make your housing issue known make the issue of your child known make the issue of your health known make the issue of coronavirus known make the issue of your finances known this is the god of heaven i refuse to be anxious 
I refuse to be perturbed by life. I may look weak, but there is a government whose jealousy has been invested upon my life. And listen, let me tell you this. Prayer is the highest demonstration of humility. It is proof that you acknowledge that by yourself and in your strength, you do not sustain that ability. So you tap into the intelligence of a government that is ancient, very ancient, with a track record of winning. Listen to me. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. Greater than the attack on your finances. When your prayer life dies, it's only a matter of time. Every other thing around your life begins to reflect prayerlessness. Someone in this conference, you need to trust God for grace. To obtain by the Spirit the, the grace for prayer and supplication. Turn the plates down in your house. Shut your door and say, I'm not only a wife, I'm a priest. I'm not only a businessman. You take on your priestly regalia and shut the door and begin to control the spiritual climate over your territory. Please sit down. Ali Sali Haprandos Kadiatos. Men who can pray do not take no for an answer. Be careful when you tell them no. You will soon say sorry. Hezekiah was a man appointed to death in chapter 38 of Isaiah. Of Isaiah. And a true prophet, Isaiah, brought him a report from God. You will not recover. And he said, thank you prophet, I honor your office. Let me talk to God. And he turned to God and said, did you not create a system of negotiation? remember if i die who replaces me in serving your purposes and god said no listen you can negotiate new realms in your life you can re <sighs> if you have not prayed don't trust the result you see let me repeat myself if you have not prayed do not trust the result you see next week i will give you a property don't trust that result until you have secured it in prayer the vacillations of men are we together now the inconsistencies of men will you will have a plethora of heartaches until you learn the excellency of prayer I don't trust anything until it is secured in prayer but if and when it is secured let it change in the physical i do not care because prayer is such a jealous holder when it holds things it keeps them everybody say prayer, prayer. i believe in prayer why do we pray in the kingdom first corinthians 16 and verse 9 First Corinthians 16. Give us verse 9. Someone please read. For a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many... Listen. You don't need to find out where Satan is. Just look for where open doors are everywhere there is an open door there is contention everywhere there is prophecy there is contention everywhere the attention of god is that's where satan is you don't need to look for where he is he is wherever the word of god is going because he wants whatever god says so if god has spoken through your man of god over your life that this is a season of shift i can tell you when jesus was done fasting the first person he met was satan i hope you know that there is a fast that brings him close to you. <laughs> Are we Bible students? Because the unusual angelic activities that happen around your life will cause hell to say, they remember Satan was once an archangel. Angels don't come to the earth for nothing. When he sees an unusual, what is wrong with this family? There has been an unusual activity of angels. Let's find out what God is saying. Because the angels excel, they confirm his word. So every time angels are released, Satan is not exactly omniscient. He does not know all things, but he can use the operation of heaven to know what God is doing. One of it is angelic activities. 
because they signify the word of God. Revelations 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus, which he gave to his servant John, he sent it and signified it by his angel. Could that be why when prophecies come, contentions come too? Because when you are lifted, the name of the Lord is also lifted. Your children are also lifted. The testimony of God's grace spreads abroad all over London. And so Satan will come. Because he knows that in your discouragement is the discouragement of many. So instead of looking for everybody, he finds you. And makes, uses your life like a painter trying to draw. And says that God is not faithful. Satan is not looking for everybody. He's looking for those that have prophecy upon their lives. Because the impact of the failure of the word in their life will do him much good. Hallelujah. One more scripture. And then we pray. James 5, 16. The Bible first starts from verse 13. It says, is any man afflicted? When you are afflicted, he did not say run to neighbors who cannot help you and open up everything about your life and your family. No. Is anyone afflicted? He says, let him pray. Even if you do not know what to do, start praying. It is in the prayer that direction comes. As they prayed, the Holy Ghost spoke and said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. Help that man. The anointing of the Spirit is upon him. You are stepping into a new dimension. Please help me with the Simba. I'm seeing a dove just come into this building. And I'm seeing 11 people. Please bring them out. Right now as I'm speaking. Right now the power of God is coming on them. Bring them out. Right now 11 people. A new dimension. Fire for prayer. Right to the back. And the overflows. It's time for the fountains to be opened. You called it a shift. Bring them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, fill me, bring them out, fill me up, God, hallelujah, now listen, 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 the Lord is telling me, um, I want to release, um, um, oh God, God is messing my sermon already, I'm about to release a grace for speed, listen, please hear me, and as I pray this grace, the power of God will come upon you. It doesn't matter where you are. And people will start running physically. I want you to hold them so they don't injure themselves. Father, I decree right now, all over this place, I bring an anointing. Move to a new dimension. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. 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 Step into a new level. Step into a new dimension. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Fill me up till I overflow. It's a new season. Liberty Church. We are not teaching cunningly devised fables. These are realities in the spirit that men can transit to dimensions. Hallelujah. We are wrapping up. This is what you get in church. Hallelujah. David. I'm hearing the name David. Who is David? David. David, you are a photographer. David, who is that? Fill me up, God. Fill me up.
you are stepping into a new level receive that anointing now new dimension in the spirit feel me that baruta saladushi alakata e prendes ke baruta siata listen listen in all honesty let me advise you there is no point living after this service because there is still one more truth that i want to share with you is you came for a conference don't waste your time and waste your life so that you can receive something that will shift you there are certain days in the lives of men dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.